Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. So today we'll be going through this paper which is Easy Data Augmentation Techniques for Boosting Performance on Text Classification Task. This came out in the year of 2019 by Jason V and Kai Zhu. So this essentially talks about introducing a data augmentation technique for text classification task. So let's understand both of these things and then we'll go through the paper. Okay, so talking about data augmentation, it's a strategy that is usually used by practitioners in case of you have very less training data set and the chances of your model overfitting your data set is really high. So this technique lets you add diversity in the data set, which lets your model generalize well, even in unseen situations. So this has been one of the prominent techniques that practitioners in the space of image processing and vision have been using for quite a some time now. So some of the things that they use is sharing, flipping, rotation, and so on and so forth. So sharing means stretching of an image, creating that as one of the input samples. So flipping would mean creating a mirror image around X or Y axis, whereas rotation would mean rotating an image around center with some degrees. So these are some of the basic ones, but there exists some exhaustive list which you can go through. Having said that, these techniques are very subjective to the kind of data set a developer is dealing with and should be used with caution. So talking about the next term, which is text classification, you can think of this in terms of doing sentiment classification, where you have a movie review X, you want to learn a function F and map it to some class label Y, which is predetermined. So it can take values as positive, negative or neutral. So this paper proposes a technique of learning set of data augmentation techniques A, where if you pass in this input sequence X, it creates its multiple versions. So let's name it till X1 to X4. If you want to create four sequences for the same input sequence. So all the XIs essentially have to be of same theme of what X was. By this, you essentially preserve the same class label, yet generating different samples by paraphrasing them. Okay, now let's move forward. We present EDA Easy Data Augmentation Technique for boosting performance on text classification task. EDA consists of four simple but powerful operations. Now here they define synonym replacement, random insertion, random swap, and random deletion. So these are essentially four things that they apply as a part of their augmentation technique. On five text classification tasks, we show that EDA improves performance on both convolution and recurrent neural networks. ED demonstrates particularly strong results for smaller data sets. Okay. Okay, so let's move forward and see what the main algorithm is. So they say they have these four steps, what they use. So first one is randomly choose N words from a sentence that are not stop words. Replace each of these words with one of its synonyms chosen at random. So stop words are essentially some unique set of words that are commonly used across any language. So the way you remove those stop words is you maintain a list of those commonly used words. So whenever a sentence comes in as an input, you mark each of the word that is stop word and you essentially prune it out from the full sentence. Let's take an example. So if you have a set S that has five words, W1, W2 till W5. We choose N words at random. Let's say our N is equal to one. So we choose one word at random and we get, let's say W3. We replace this word with one of its synonyms that was also chosen at random. So we have a list of synonym words for W3. Now you choose a random word from this. Let's say if it becomes S3 and you replace W3 with S3 for this sentence. So a new S becomes W1, W2, S3, W5. So this is a new augmented sentence that they propose as a part of step one. The second rule they suggest is find a random synonym of random word in a sentence that is not a stop word. Insert that synonym into random position in a sentence and repeat this step n number of times. Okay, so as we saw like synonym replacement was in place replacement. So the length of the original sequence didn't get affect. Whereas in this case, uh, it looks like since you're inserting a synonym at random positions, the length is going to increase. So it depends on how many times you do it. If you do it n times, the length will increase by 
same number of tokens so essentially again in the same case if you have the same sentence s which is w1 to w5 you choose any random word let's say w2 this time you find the synonym which is let's say s2 you insert s2 at any position it could be either in the beginning either in the last or somewhere in between and that is your newly augmented sentence based on this rule okay talking about the third rule randomly choose two words in a sentence and swap their positions you do this a number of times okay so by this they mean if you have a sentence s that is w1 to w5 you choose two words let's say i choose w2 and w4 then i need to swap them in the original sentence so the augmented sentence becomes w1 w4 w3 w2 w5 so this is the newly augmented sentence as per this rule the last one where you randomly remove each word in a sentence with probability p which is pretty straightforward okay so these are pretty weird rules what i feel because especially the third one uh, for example if you have a, a sentence let's say cat eats rat now if i choose two random words from this sentence the possibility are i can get cat and rat as my w random 1 and w random 2 if i swap these two things it becomes rat eats cat so which totally inverses what the meaning of the original sentence was so i'm not sure to how correct this rule is but these are essentially four rules what authors have proposed and they pretty much show to have increased performance when it comes to dealing with augmentation for smaller data sets one of the hypotheses that i can make is uh, if you analyze these four rules i believe these are kind of derived from how a human writer would make mistakes he can also replace an easy word with its synonym he can randomly insert certain word at any position in a sentence so those are kind of small small mistakes that a human writer could make while he's writing a bigger text so i believe this was the motivation how the authors came up with these rules although i didn't find these to be justified in the paper to why did they only come up with these four rules and what else did they try and didn't work out that would be interesting to know so now let's see the results to what they're getting they use five benchmark text classification tasks which is Stanford sentiment tree bank then customer reviews then subjective objective data set track question answering and procon data set so uh, this table essentially shows average performance across all the five text classification tasks uh, for the models that they train so they worked around with cnn as well as rnn models for different training set sizes so they experimented with 500 2000 5000 and full set of the training data for training their models and essentially these were the performance numbers that they got so it is clearly evident like for smaller training set sizes uh, the prediction from rnn got them on an average of 75.3 percentage of accuracy and with eda if they perform and augment their data set they get up to 79.1 percentage so this is pretty cool to see approximately four percent increase in accuracy numbers although if you see the full set they were already getting 87.4 percentage and it was a negligible increase to 88.3 percentage in terms of accuracy numbers so which is pretty obvious because the lower the data set you have and if you do augmentation on top of it model is supposed to learn many different variety of things and supposed to generalize well although if you already have a very large data set then adding augmentations usually don't help so yeah that justifies our argument as well and so if you see the average numbers for cnn and rn so it was 76.9 and there was increased to 79.9 so yeah clearly for any of the techniques they tried even for rnn or cnn there was an increase in approximately four percent for smaller size data set so yeah that's a cool result i guess so i missed on one thing so they said since long sentences have more words than short ones they can absorb more noise while maintaining their original class label so they're saying a uh, number of words that you choose to kind of select at random it depends on the size of the sentence as well or essentially the length of the sentence as well the longer the length the more noise can be injected compared to if you have a shorter sentence adding a noise might lead to loss of information so what they define they define a formula n is equal to alpha l where l is the sentence length n is the number of words that you change for 
each of these techniques what they have proposed and alpha is the parameter that indicates the percentage of words in a sentence that are changed so for example if you have a sentence of 10 words and your alpha is 0.1 so if you see uh, n would become 0.1 times 10 which is equal to 1 so one word per 10 words will be kind of used for augmentation purposes so again this is a tunable parameter that you can tune to see what works best for your data set okay so moving forward so this is essentially the same results that we saw in the above table so they have divided their data set into multiple chunks of 20 percent 40 percent 60 80 and 100 which is the full size the blue one shows without adf the train on that segment of the data set and the red one is essentially after they apply ed and expand their training size what is the accuracy number that they're getting for example for this question answering task of tech data set without ed they were getting around something 0 0.7675 and for the red ones after they do the ed they're getting around 0 0.83 or something which is a pretty good increase but that necessarily is not the case with other data sets if you see which is a marginal increase if you see in the remaining data sets so this one is still fine but if you see this one is again a marginal increase so yeah also they did a bit of a variation to all of the four techniques that they mentioned and how did they behave by varying the alpha parameter so alpha was the percentage of words changed in a sentence as you can see if the alpha is 0.1 which is 10 percent of the words changed then the numbers are pretty on the higher side if you consider 500 samples for the training set and as you go towards 0.5 which means you're changing approximately 50 percent of the words in the input sentence the accuracy starts to drop so this is pretty obvious because as you increase the size of alpha you are increasing noise in that data set for it to make any sense for the model to learn anything from so if you see this is pretty common pattern that happens across all the four injections that they're doing and also if the size of the data set is pretty large if you use let's say full data set then the accuracy numbers actually go down that is also something which is alarming and uh, kind of gives us a hint of using a lower alpha value so let's move forward i guess we are almost there with the paper yeah so this is the final stage where they talk about how much augmentation to be done so they defined a parameter n aug that kind of tells you how many sentences to create from the original sentence so the authors played around with a variety of range ranging from 1 to 32 and saw the performance gains for different data sizes as you can see for the data set of 500 size if you generate 16 sentences per sentence you are going to get maximum gain essentially so you are going to get approximately 2.5 percent of the gain and if you will see carefully for the full data set you see the numbers to be saturating really fast which means for full data set even if you increase the number of augmentations the things are not going to increase much there's a maximum of 0.4 to 0.5 percent difference that you're going to see which is really marginal compared to the computational cost that you'll have to bear so i guess we are done with the paper so i would like to tell some of my thoughts about this so i guess there should have been some kind of comparison with other augmentation techniques as well uh, since authors have mentioned about doing a back translation which is first you translate from let's say english to french then back from french to english so you should be getting a bit of a different paraphrased version of the same input sentence also i think there was a missing segment to this paper to how did they generate synonyms and all at the first place because the way you generate synonym will definitely add noise to that particular set and they have explicitly mentioned about using random synonym from that set so uh, how are they kind of tuning the parameter of not choosing something that is totally off so that is something again to be thought of so i guess this paper was something really nice to read and something to like try out really quickly so that was it for this video if you like such content do let me know in the comments share it around with your friends and make sure you subscribe to the channel thank you